tell you. Some days you just don't feel like making videos. So hey guys, quick reminder for those of you subscribing. I really appreciate you. Obviously my views are higher than my subscribers. Remember we need that little boost. It's tough sometimes to get to doing these things. So it's free to like and subscribe. Um, for those of you that haven't yet, just subscribing and let us know that we're reaching people and we're helping out. Let's get started. All right guys, so we are taking a look at week four here. We are getting into volume. It is a pretty simple one, which is nice. You're provided with a bit of code here. Doesn't look like there's a whole lot to go over. Here's your implementation details. We're using 16 bytes signed values. They already gave you the volume sample that you need. Here's some hints right here. Uh, unit eight underscore T N header F read and F write. Those are gonna be big ones. So let's get into this and take a look and unpack what we were given already. We're going to the top of this code here. Uh, we just modify the volume of an audio file. I have some extra notes here. So this uh, defines the constant header size to store the number of bytes in a .wav file. This one happens to be 44 bytes. This is the check command line argument. So we're checking that the program is called with exactly three command line arguments. We need an input file name, an output file name, and a scaling factor for the audio. Otherwise, it's going to throw an error. This next line here is going to attempt to open the input file specified in the command line argument. Otherwise, if you typed it in wrong or anything, it's going to throw an error. This line here is going to output the file specified in the command line argument. Otherwise, it's going to be an error if it couldn't find that file. This one here converts the scaling factor argument from a string to a float using the A to F. Now, we've used that in a previous one, so the A to F is how we are converting the string to a float. Our to-dos are to copy the header from the input file to the output file and write updated data to the output file. So actually going to be pretty simple here, and then the files are closed. Not a whole lot to do on this particular problem here. We've already got some extra notes in there, which you guys know that I like to put in there to make sure that we know what we're doing here. So let's get started. A real quick look back at the notes here. You notice that one of the things that I put in here was unit eight underscore T to represent a byte. You can create an array of N bytes for your header with a syntax. Okay. Like unit eight underscore T header N. We are actually going to be using that. So let's get started with that. So we're going to copy the header from the input to the output file, just like it told us to in the notes. So unit eight underscore T factor equal, and we're going to use the same A to F function that they've used previously, arg v three, and close this out here. And it's that simple. Now we need to read the data from the header file and write that data to the file. So in order to do that, we are going to use the functions that told us here, f read and f write. So let's go ahead and get started on that. So first we want to read the data from the file. Now these notes are tabbed out just because they're notes that I added. The code won't actually have to be tabbed out. So we're going to read it. So f read. And then we're going to read header. We're going to read the size of, and from what we put above, unit 8 t header size now this has to be typed in just as it is because that was declared up top so it has to be exact input and close that one out so header size was defined up here and we have to use it exactly as it was defined okay next we need to use our write function so we're going to use the f write as it told us to in the notes and what are we going to write we're going to write the header we're going to use the same functions as above, unit 8t, header size, and this time we're going to do the output, and we're going to close that out. Next, we need to read the samples from the input file and write the updated data to the output. So we're going to use something else here, the int16t buffer from the notes right here. So we're going to type that in, int16 underscore t sample and we need to use the f read and the f write again to read and then relay that data but this time we need to use it in a while loop so let's open up our while loop f read and sample size of int 16 underscore t let's get that fixed before we make a mistake comma one comma input
equal equal one and that's going to be our first section here now we're going to open up that while loop and i'm going to go ahead and move my note up here just to clean this up and then back to our while loop i'm going to sample you can use asterisk equal factor which is our scaling factor and we're gonna write f right and let's fix sample real quick so f right ampersand sample size of use the same int 16 t 1 and this time output and then close that out. And the files are already closed for you. So let's go over this section right here real quick. So we're using the int 16 underscore t and then we're declaring sample, right? So this variable is used to hold one sample of audio at a time. And then we have our while. So the f read and sample, and then let's fix size of real quick here int 16 underscore t one input equals one so this line is reading one sample of audio from the input input and is then storing this variable sample then the fread function reads the data from the input file and stores it into the memory location that we pointed to by and sample size of int 16 dash t so that specifies the data to read which is the size of int underscore or 16 underscore t which is two bytes the one specifies the number of items to read so in the expression f read equals one then we're checking whether or not the file read function was able to read one item of the data successfully if it was the loop continues to the next line and if it wasn't then like the the end of the file has been reached and the loop exits right then we have our sample asterisk equals factor so this portion here is modifying the sample by multiplying it with the scaling of factor right that factor is our scaling factor so it's going to scale the volume of the sample and effectively change the audio output then the updated sample is going to be written to the output file output using the f write function that we have in there we're using the same and sample argument to specify the memory location of the data to write the memory location of the sample variable. And again, the int 16 underscore t is effectively telling you that it's two bytes of data. The while loop repeats itself reading the next sample of audio from the input file and writing the updated sample to the same output file until there's no more samples left from the input file. So that's what we're doing here. So let's see if this all works out. So let's get in there first, cd volume and make volume so I made a big mistake on line 37 I actually retyped what I typed up top just not thinking so unit 8t is actually the header right and then header size and what I did there is I just typed in the same factor a to f which had already been done so let's fix unit 8t and it's actually not unit my apologies it's u i n t so let me get that in there the proper way and see if this doesn't work. And it looks like I actually made the same mistake a few times, so let's get those fixed. It's U I N T, and let me plug that in up here as well. And I should have realized that because of the color. So now that we've got those fixed, let's make volume. And even though I was just supposed to copy the code from above, it looks like I missed the size of instead of I just put just size. So let's fix that to size of. There we go. And volume makes. Now, I haven't checked style in the last few ones. Make sure you guys are checking them because the way I do this, I put a lot of notes to the side so you guys can understand that I put those there. Those stylistically are not in the right spot, so I haven't been running style. So make sure you do run your style guide because you are going to get hit for points if your style's off. So make sure you check those. And we're going to run our check real quick. Boom, there you have it. Our audio file makes exactly the way that it's supposed to. This is CS50. That was volume. I'm Devin, and as always, you guys are awesome. Thanks a lot. Appreciate you. Like, subscribe. We'll see you next time.